Hi everyone, this is Miss Mariah from the Allen County Public Library, and this is our adult story hour. It's a story hour for adults with special needs. We started this, oh, it's been going on two years now, and unfortunately we, we've had, you know, the COVID virus come in and just kind of put a break on it, but I try each month to bring a story, a craft, something for you guys to know that we're still here, we're still thinking about you, and hopefully uh, we can get enough people vaccinated and can get the numbers down enough. I'm fingers crossed, you know, maybe in the fall, maybe even late summer, we might be able to meet again as long as we kind of distance and, and things like that. So fingers crossed everybody. <laughs> Stay healthy, get those numbers down so we can all meet again. <laughs> so this month, we're gonna be reading a fun book. It's called Stroganoma, there you go, I'll get it. And it is about a grandmother witch in this town who trusts someone to watch over a very important pasta pot. And, and let's just say things don't go the way that they need to go. The book is written by Tommy De Paola. And we are given permission by Simon and Schuster to read this book. So let's give a big thanks to them because they have really, throughout this whole pandemic, been wonderful to schools and library, public libraries around the nation. Just letting us read their books to, to you guys at home since, you know, not all of us can meet like we were used to. And also, we've got a craft with this one. I'll have the bags upstairs in the lobby, but we're gonna make a mobile using noodles and yarn, I know. And I painted, listen guys, all these noodles that are painted, I painted myself for you guys. Our director's like, well, you know, we can buy colored noodles. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm painting these and, you know, I, I enjoy this and I know it's gonna be for my people. So I did it. It took me like three days, <laughs> I did it. There was a lot of noodles to be painted. So Stroganoma, you guys ready? I am. It, it's a little long, but it's, it's a fun, fun book and it's got a good lesson and all the stuff that, you know, books are, are supposed to be, right? <laughs> Here we go. In a town called Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old woman, everyone called Stroganoma, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in the town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Stroganoma did have a magic touch. Here's everybody in the village. There's always that person in everybody's life that you're just like, you know, what, you know, they're kind of different, but there's just something about them that makes you trust them and, and let them help you. She could cure a headache with oil, water, and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. And she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Stroganoma was getting old and she needed someone to help keep her and her little house and her garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. So she's needing some help, you know, just keeping everything up. So here she is, she's putting her sign up. Oh, I wonder who she's gonna get. And big Anthony, who didn't pay attention went to see her. Anthony, said Stroganoma, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, crazy, said big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Stroganoma, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable, and I do not let anyone touch it. 
Oh, see, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work and Stroganoma met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed and he had food to eat. One evening, Big Anthony was milking the goat and he heard Stroganoma singing. Peeking in the window, he saw her standing over the pasta pot. So he's got his chores. And I don't think he went there to get a job. He, he just came there and she's like, you'll do. <laughs> she sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly full of steaming hot pasta. Then Stroganoma sung, enough, enough pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, Big Anthony said. That's a magic pot for sure. And Stroganoma called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't get to see, get, I apologize, didn't get to see Stroganoma blow three kisses into the magic pot. Okay, so now he's heard the song she sings but he didn't see what she did. And the last thing she did was blew three kisses into the magic pasta pot. I'm kind of guessing that that is probably gonna be some valuable information. <laughs> and this is what happened. The next day when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded silly. And the a pot that cooked all by itself? You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and I will make it cook and then they'll all be sorry. Oh no, Big Anthony is gonna get in trouble, isn't he? The day came sooner than even Big Anthony thought because two days after Stroganoma said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend Stronga Amelia. So she is also a grandma. Sweep the house, weed the garden, feed the goat, and milk her. And for your lunch, there's some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Stroganoma, said Big Anthony. But inside he was thinking, my chance has come. Oh, no, what is he going to do? He's going to mess with that pasta pot, isn't he? Sometimes you just have to follow the rules. Even if you don't understand them or want to, you've got to follow those rules. As soon as Stroganoma was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it onto the floor. Let's see if I can remember those words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, bull me pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup, boil enough to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and filled with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran into the town square and jumped on the fountain and shouted, everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls, pasta for all at straw, oh no, <laughs> Strong no, um, Noma's house. So he's, he's going to get in trouble, right? Yeah. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. 
So he's invited everyone out, but there was other steps, remember? Cause she had also had staying for the pot to stop and then she blew three kisses. Big Anthony hasn't done this. Of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks, plates, platters, and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Stromnola's house, the pasta pot was full and it was beginning to overflow. Okay, so you remember when I read Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? <laughs> I think this is gonna be along that lines. I think we're about to, to get an overload on pasta. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates, platters, and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. So he's feeding the whole town, which is okay, you know. At least he's not letting it go to waste. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside to the applause of a crowd. Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone, he didn't notice the pasta pot was still boiling and bubbling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And the pasta was pouring out of the pot over the floor of, oh, Strugnome, she's going to be mad, it's a house, and out the door. No, she's not going to be happy at all. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept pouring out. Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put, on the pot, put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled onto the floor. Her strong Noma's house. Okay, so he's gonna be in trouble, right? Yeah. See, that's why we gotta follow rules, right? Because he didn't really know what he was doing. He just did what he thought he knew. Stop, yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop. And if anyone hadn't, if, uh, sorry, if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road and all the people were running ahead. So now he's in trouble. Stragnona is gonna be so mad him you think she might be I'd be a little mad I mean we all get a little mad when somebody doesn't listen to us and something bad happens but I think she might be a little forgiving too we must protect our town from the pasta shouted the mayor get mattresses tables doors anything to make a barricade but even that didn't work the pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming so now everybody's in <laughs> survival attack mode. They're, they're like, okay, we gotta do something. We are lost, said the people and the priest and the sisters from the convent, convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have, but strong Anoma, now she's back. Had she had came down the road home from her visit, 
she didn't have to look twice to know what happened. So here they are in the town square. So the pasta is filling up the town. Even the birds are flying away. She sang the magic song and blew three kisses. And with a sputter, the pot stopped. Boiling and the pasta came to a halt. So remember the three kisses. But see, he didn't hear that. He didn't see that part. Oh, thank you, thank you, the people cried. But then they turned on poor big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. <laughs> so they're, <laughs> they're out to get him, aren't they? <laughs> Bless his heart. Now wait, she said. The punishment must fit the crime. She took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta for my magic pasta pot. And I want to sleep in my bed tonight. So start eating. Oh no, <laughs> he's gonna have to eat all that pasta. And he did. Poor big Anthony. <laughs> so she's making him eat all that pasta up. And his belly is starting to poop out. And there he is. All the pasta's eaten. She's asleep in her bed. <laughs> and he's full. Isn't that a cute story? And, you know, and like I said, you know, sometimes even when we don't like the rules, they're there for a reason. Even if they sound silly, even like with what's going on, I know some of us don't like wearing the mask, but they're there. It's the rules there for a reason. So we may not like it, but, you know, we sometimes just have to follow rules we don't necessarily <laughs> like. <laughs> So, there you go. Thank you again, Simon and Schuster, for letting us read this. And, as I promised, we have a mobile. Now, you guys know what a mobile is. It's, uh, in fact, I got the bracket right here. Okay, so here's one I've already made. I'll hold this up. Get that string out of there. So, see? So, pasta. Pasta can be an Italian dish. It could be a, a, an Asian dish. So, what I did was everybody's going to get a set of chopsticks, see, and a fork. And I've already glued the, the yarn onto the fork for you guys. And we're going to make a pasta mobile. So, I'm going to set everything up. And I'll be right back with you guys. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back. We are going to make our noodle mobile. So I've got, I got these from Shogun. Uh, I had bought, cause I had taught myself how to make sushi. So I bought a big bag of chopsticks. So that's what's in you guys craft bag upstairs. So I'm just gonna break these apart. And we're gonna, like a crossroads. Just gonna put them together like this, okay? And everybody's gonna have it. I don't know what colors, just there's different colors of pipe cleaner in there. So we're just gonna hold it in the center. And we're gonna wrap it around a couple of times this way. And we're gonna wrap it around a couple of times this way, just to hold the, the chopsticks together, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna take the two ends and just kinda, cause I decided to use um, pipe cleaner cause they have that wire in there and they tend to hold a little bit better, right? Okay, so, and I'm just kinda making them even. Just like that, isn't that awesome? Okay, so we've got that part. And then everybody has a fork, and I painted them all different colors, so I don't know what color fork you'll get. This is probably the fork that Anthony used to eat all that pasta. 
that's gonna hang in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it through here and it's gonna hang down a little lower. See like, see how it hangs lower than the rest of your pasta. So we're just gonna leave it a little long and just tie it. I'm just gonna put it, pull it through there. I'm just gonna make a simple knot, right? Oh good, there's a pair of scissors. Chelsea always has a pair of scissors over here where she was doing her knitting program. Okay, so I'm gonna take her little tiny scissors and I'm just gonna trim off that extra string. Throw away. Okay. So there you go. There you got your middle piece. So I'm gonna set this and I've got white string, yellow string, and we're just gonna alternate them. When I say alternate, like white here, yellow here, white here, yellow here, okay? And I think this, this shorter piece will be the one that we tie up here. Okay, so we've got our white piece and I'm just gonna take a noodle 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 and I'm gonna run it through I said I'm gonna run it through how did I do that oh, yeah I did run it through this one's just a little ornery okay so I'm just pushing that yarn through see peeked out over here and I'm just gonna go halfway up and and you guys are you've got a lot of noodles so you you can pick out what you want to do on what string. That's why I wanted to paint them all different colors and give you guys lots of noodles to work with. And I'm just tying this noodle onto here. Let's see, it's just kind of hanging there. And let's see, that's a, it's like a, that's a Viridian, like a blue green. And I think I'm going to get a pink one. And you might every once in a while see a piece of like, um, newspaper hanging out. It's because when I was painting them, I put them on newspaper so I wouldn't get paint everywhere. Because y'all, those of you that have taken my painting glasses, y'all know I get paint everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this through. Maybe, maybe not. Or maybe I'll just pick another noodle that's not gonna be so contrary. How about that? Nobody likes contrariness except when you're being contrary, right? We can all be contrary every once in a while. Okay, so again, I've ran it through and I'm just gonna just tie it just like that. Pull it and then I'm gonna make a knot. Okay, just like that. Yep, just simple, simple. And then here at the bottom, I'm gonna take, we'll take a pink one since we didn't use a pink straight, like a rigatoni, whatever noodle. ZD, I think these are actually ZD noodles. ZD and bow tie. Now, if you have other noodles at home and you wanna paint them or use a marker and color them and to add, or if you got beads, I mean, it's, it's totally up to you guys because y'all know how I am. It's whatever you like. Okay, so I got my noodles on there. I've got my bracket. So I'm just gonna come right here about this far. There's your string. And I'm just gonna tie this string on here. And you might need to get somebody to help you because like right now it'd be great if I had a third person or a second person going, hey, here's a third hand. Let's, let's work on this together. And I've got it tied, and then I'm gonna take the and snip it. It's gone. Okay, so see. So what you're gonna do is every other, every other branch or side of the chopstick, you're gonna tie. You're gonna make your noodles. You're gonna tie them on there. 
Do whatever you want, ever how many you want. Use every noodle in your bag, add noodles, add beads, find, you know, I, whatever you want to put on there. And then you'll have an extra string you tied to the top so you can suspend it, hang it from something. You can, what, whatever, you know, your parent says, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want people calling me going, um, they hung it to the ceiling fan and it flew away. So, there you go. That is our craft. And our bags are upstairs. And like, a, you know, y'all know, you know, if you need me, if you have any questions whatsoever, and you know, about the, the book, about the craft, or just, you know, you want to make a suggestion of the next book we want to read, just get a hold of me. The phone number at the library is 270-237-3861. You can, some of you guys know me on Facebook. You can send me a message on Facebook. Just whatever you guys need, just just reach out and we will work it out and we'll, we'll do something. But like I said, if, if things keep going as well as they are, hopefully, I, I would really like to see at the end of summer that that we get to meet. And it may even be outside. I mean, we may hang out on the front porch and you know, read a book and work on something. Maybe we'll work on something a little messy. Who knows? I mean, y'all know me. I'll just be like, hey, let's do this. And then my director will be like, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. So just anytime, you know, if you guys have a suggestion of a book, a craft, something, just get in touch with me. We'll do it. But I guess that's all we have for this month. I'm glad you guys listened to me read that book. I know I messed up a couple of times. I get tongue-tied because I get so excited. I'll be reading and I'm like, I want to find out what happens next. And then my brain gets out here and my mouth is like, wait a minute, I'm still catching up. So, but it all, it happens to all of us, right? <laughs> I just love the fact that you guys are patient with me and understanding. So, until next month... Or maybe the month after that. I don't. I don't know what's coming up next month because I do know that we've got summer reading uh, signups. We're having an adult summer reading. Chelsea's handling that. A teen summer reading, which is uh, Miss Delanda, and we're all taking turns with the children's summer reading because Miss Amanda has not had her baby yet, but she is on maternity leave. They, they've they asked her just to stay at home and take it easy for these next couple of weeks. So, um, if you know any little kids that want to sign up for the summer reading, just give us a call. We're going to start that the middle of next month. So, I don't know exactly with the scheduling and stuff what's going on, but I will keep you guys informed. Um, you guys being adults, if you want to join the adult summer reading, Miss Chelsea will get you signed up for that. Um, I know that there is an art project we're going to be doing that um, is paint by numbers, which I love paint by numbers. We're going to do that. We're going to do it outside, weather permitting. I know she's going to have the police uh, come up and do some programs uh, like stories of survival. Um, the K-9 unit. She's working out, you know, getting the K-9 unit up here. Yeah, so a lot of stuff uh, coming around. A lot of it's virtual, but we're going to try to have the adult classes in person because we're all adults. We know, okay, you know, if we're going to have to be inside, we're going to have to wear our mask. If we're outside, we know, okay, we can take off our mask, but we're going to have to social distance. So, but you guys got this. You, I'm not even, I'm, I'm kind of hoping some of you guys or all of you guys sign up because I'd love to see you again. So until next time, this is Miss Mariah with Allen County Public Library, and this has been our adult story hour. See you guys later. Bye.